Hello web design students and search engine optimizers, uh, students from my class and also YouTube viewers, welcome. Uh, this is going to be a brief tutorial on how to set up an analytics account for a specific site. So this is assuming you already have an analytics platform set up, like you have a, an account in analytics and then within analytics each site that you decide you want to track is its own separate account. So I'll, I'll actually walk you through setting that up as well. And just a quick disclaimer, as I have in front of a lot of my videos, and this one will be a bit shorter um, than some of my full lectures as I'm just covering how to set up a new tracking account in analytics. But this assumes that you have a Google account for yourself already set up, which is very basic. And I'll, I'll briefly walk you through that as well. So let's, let's get cracking. Let's get on the web here. Okay, so here I am at the Google homepage. I already have a Google account. Okay, so in case you don't, and, and this is a very powerful tool that Google offers for free, I mean, and it's probably, I would start using analytics prior to using AdWords so that the money you spend in AdWords is, is uh, spent, you know, with, with better data backing up your decisions. But uh, let's assume that you don't have an account at all. I'm just going to sign out. When you go to Google.com, you're going to see a sign-in button because everybody is, whether you have an account or not. If you go to click the sign-in button and you don't have an account, you can create an account right here where I'm circling with my mouse. Okay, see this that I'm highlighting? Create an account for free. So to, to actually apply the skills in this brief tutorial um, having to do with setting up an analytics platform, or sorry, an analytics site for tracking, you do need a Google account. Now I of course have one, so I'm going to get logged in here quickly. Okay. So now I'm logged in, I'm right back at the Google homepage. It looks exactly like it did before, but I'm logged in. Uh, from here, there's a couple ways you can navigate to the analytics platform and start using it. Uh, number one way, and this is uh, similar to how you get to a lot of Google sites, is you, you put in the name of the product, the Google product, before you type in google.com. So analytics would go to here, and if you already have a Google account you're already signed in, you would just click sign in and it would take you right to the platform, okay? Now we're going to go back there in a second, just sit tight. Um, so if you wanted to go to AdWords, for example, or AdSense, it would be the same thing, .google.com. It's just the, the quick way there if you don't want to have to start looking around for these pages. Okay, and again, it's, 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 it often asks you to sign back in when you, when you directly access these pages, so here's another way to do it. Once you get into your account, click on the drop down next to your account icon, and if you set up an account, it's where I just showed you the link that said set up an account for free, it's it's pretty simple. It's just like setting up an email address. They ask you for a bunch of stuff. If you want to put a picture in, you can. I, I would. I think it's kind of friendly. And then you go to account, and under account, you can click on this little link that says products. When you click on products, it will show you all the products that you're using, which you probably won't have that many there if you just set up a Google account. It will also show you products that you can use or you, you may also like to use, okay? Um, I'm not actually using AdWords in this one yet. That's going to be for a another video I'm going to start using analytics first and I've already I've already gone there before and started it up so it's under my your products that I'm using so I'd click on analytics from here so why don't you guys pause and if you don't have a Google account get it set up everybody do that everybody get to here okay now when you get to here if you've never set up uh, a specific website to be tracked in analytics before you won't have anything here it'll take you to a page that either looks somewhat like this or suggests that they're going to help you set one up. I'm just going to show you how to do that right now, okay? So as soon as you get to the home page, um, go to the admin page, okay? Because wh wherever Google Analytics takes you, you should be able to click on the admin link. Don't go back to my account because that takes you to your Google account. These, uh, anything on the orange bar or lower keeps you in Analytics. and. This is the newest platform you should know that we're dealing with here. This is um, as of November 2012. They've changed the platform several times. This is showing you how to set up a new tracking account in the current platform. And again, you would likely not have anything here yet. This would be empty. So from this page, you would go admin. And from admin, you, would, you should see accounts. You should still see a tab, but you won't have uh, anything in there. And in case you don't, and I haven't had my account set up with no accounts in it for a while, um, over on the help tab you should have the button as well to add a new account okay so either from here or here depending on how uh, the settings on the way your platform is supposed to look are set up you should be able to just click the button to add a new account and it's that simple so add a new account and it'll talk to you about how this is done so I'm gonna give you a quick pause or you guys pause very quickly I'm just gonna keep going but this explains it kinda word for word exactly how you do it and now I'm gonna go ahead and 
Okay, so following these steps, I'm going to go here and click New Account, and I'm going to put in my information. Now, just so you know, if, if you are a student in my course and you're in Professor Gray's course, you cannot use that Google account to generate the tracking code for your final project website. Yes, you are going to create code, a lot of you, for sites that aren't going to be launched into the real world and probably won't see a lot of... Uh, activity but it, it's the process of getting the code in there is the very first step to actually using this platform and and taking advantage of all the great benefits it has so this is the number one thing you got to do and this a lot of people do uh, work in analytics very very well and don't even understand how to put the code in they just need the web designer to do that and then they go and analyze the data what I'm showing you is the simplicity of how easy it is to put this code in Okay, first thing you got to do, set up the website. So what's the website name? I'm going to call it according to the demo site here. This is my fishing site, right? That's what we're, we're going to put this into. Uh, here's my homepage. It's Mike's fishing site. Let's just look at the site title. I mean, let's name it something fairly appropriate for what the site's about. It's Mike's fishing site, so let's call it Mike's fishing GA account. Okay, and, and you don't have to name GA account. I mean, this really is just the website name. Just as easily call it Mike's fishing site. That's probably more appropriate. Now, your website URL, uh, you actually will have a domain a URL, like a path to follow to your site, even if you're in my course and you haven't purchased a domain, you're still going to have one. So it's assumed that you've already uh, reviewed the video on how to set up the server connection in my class, so you should know that your URL would be as follows. So it would be www.kinlandschool.com, okay, and then forward slash the folder that contains all of the student sites from your semester and then your last name. You don't need index.html, it would be accessing the same file anyway, we haven't gotten into that whole canonical thing. Um, so you just you draw the path and it's as simple as that. And You do want to have an accurate address in there so that your code actually works. Okay, and I'm not going to be checking your data, I'm just going to be checking on your final projects that you actually put the code into each page in your site because it does go into each page in your site. But you still should put the right domain in there, okay? And now at this point, if you have connected the server, when you go to that domain, okay, you should see your home page. Um, but this is all a lesson from uh, another tutorial video that, that teaches you how to connect to the server. I'm just, I'm just showing you that even if you're in my course and you don't have your own domain name, uh, you're still going to use the proper uh, web address for your GA account. Everyone will have their own account. You cannot use the account in Professor Gray's class. You cannot use some random account that somebody else's. It doesn't take much time to set up a Google account. You set it up, you go to GA, you do what I'm doing right here. Let's call the category, unless you're actually going to launch this, let's call it education. Um, because in lieu of you actually keeping this on the web for a long period of time, you don't want to mislead. Google does a good job of collecting data and figuring out what all their users are doing, so be honest and tell them what it is. If you're actually doing one of those sites in my course that's going to be launched and used in the real world, you can pick um, an industry here. Uh, we, we are in Canada in my course, so we might as well switch that up to have the proper location. Closest city to us with the same time zone is going to be Toronto. And now we'll give the account a name. So that's the name of the website. You can actually put multiple domains or sites in an account. So this is where, uh, what I was doing above, this is where it would be more appropriate to call this Mike's Fishing Site GA account. Because you might want to individually track other domains within this account. So, And you're going to spell it right. And use with other Google products. This is, this is a good idea. Uh, because if you're using, uh, you know, YouTube and, and AdSense and AdWords and Webmaster Tools, you're going to want all this stuff connected, so you should probably just leave that checked. Uh, anonym uh, anonymously with Google and others, you can give that a quick read and decide if you want to do that. I always just give Google as much cloud as I can because I think they do good work with all the data they collect. So once you get this set up, you go get tracking ID, and then it will ask you if you're okay with the whole shimmy mandu. Did I just say that? It'll ask you if you're okay with all this. You might want to switch it to Canada. Just make sure you agree to the correct terms of service or keep it on the U.S. or whatever country you're in and then accept, okay? And, of course, you should have paused there and read that. That immediately takes you to a page where you are given your tracking code, okay? Now, assuming you're ready to paste that in right now, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. And then right after that, I'll show you how to get back to the code in the case that you... Uh, you just kind of set up the account and then left it, and then you needed to get back to the code, and that's not th that hard to find either. So let's take it from here and paste it in, okay? And just here, really quickly, 
Um, this is from a Google Help page, and I just wanted to clarify this because several of my students that are are getting heavy into this GA stuff in our GA course, they said to me, "Oh no, you got to put it in the body. It goes in the body now." And putting it in the head is like totally old school. Uh, this is a Google support doc that is that is active right now, and and you know I know Google updates their stuff constantly, and it's almost the end of November 2012, and it says right here, once you find the code snippet, copy and paste it just before the closing head tag. So, ladies and gentlemen, in my course and out there in the web world on YouTube, if you've heard otherwise, that is not correct, okay? According to Google, the best place to put it is still within the head, and they're indicating here that they prefer you put it just before the head closes. So you may have other links to script, uh, you know, with, within your site. Just make sure you put it in the right place. And, of course, this code will come directly from your individual analytics account. So as soon as I set up the account, it took me right to the tracking info tab, and I will take the code copy the code, go into the page that I want to start tracking, and you should have this on every page in your site. And if you're in my course, please understand that you will not get full credit for this, uh, this component or this step in the final project that is worth some points unless you have it on every single page of your site. Now, it doesn't need to be altered from page to page unless you actually start setting up different, um, different sites within this account that you want to track separately. And this, this is something you've covered in, in the analytics course. I'm just showing you the administration of this here. So go down to where your head closes and give yourself some space, like enter a few lines, and then go up and maybe a couple lines before the last piece of uh, script or link or whatever it is there. Paste the code in. I'm just using cut and paste on my keyboard. Leave a couple lines below. That way it's always easy to go and find the analytics code because sometimes they do update the code and you would then need to update it in your site. Um, sometimes you need to get it out of there because you decide you want to stop tracking your site. Uh, they won't do that to you too often, like updating it. So once you get it in there, you sh you're good. You would save the changes and you would close the file. And of course, if you want it to be actually tracked on the web, once the, the script is in there, you, you have to upload those files that you, uh, you've changed. And I don't need to upload dependent files because I haven't changed any of the graphics or CSS or anything. I just upload the index and then back on uh, oops, wrong window. Okay, back here where I have the page loaded, if I go and view page source, you'll see right before my head closes, I don't have anything in there. But if I hit refresh, because I just uploaded it from the server, now I have the GA code in there. So don't forget, of course, you know, once you get the code in there, if you're using Dreamweaver, and that's how I've, I've kind of led you to, uh, to creating a website in, in my YouTube videos, you have to still upload the change. Every time you change a file, it's not going to be on the server until you upload it. Okay, so tracking code is in there. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the rest of my pages now and upload those, but you're not going to have to watch that. The one thing I wanted you to see is what if you created the account and you'd already left this screen that it took you to automatically. I mean, this is the easiest way to get the code is right when you set up the account because it takes you right to the screen where the code is. And you'll see you're on the tracking info page. There's the code. Okay, I'm going to show you how you get back to the page where you could use the code if you've already left there. So we're going to start at the beginning at the analytics, um, well, at your analytics platform homepage. Okay, so here we are back. Yeah, here we are back at the main analytics page. And if I were to go, like, if I were to have been in the account and I went to the account homepage, it's still, this is going to be the place you usually get to it when you first access your analytics account if, you, if you've shut it down in that browser previously. So it'll have all your accounts listed. If you only have one, it'll just have one. And you're not going to go into it this way. This is where you would usually want to go to see like, hey, who's coming to my site? What kind of data am I getting? You'd click on the account, go to data. And obviously we just set this up literally seconds ago, so we don't have any data yet. It, it takes a bit of time there. Um, you're not going to go here yet, okay? We're, this is You're still setting up your account, and this is in the case that you went and set this up but forgot to save the code in one of your pages. Now you need to go back and say you're in my class, for example. You need to get back into your Google Analytics account and get that code to paste into all your site pages. You go to here. You're at your account home. You go to admin, just like we did to set up a new account. Then you click on the account itself, so that's the one we just set up. And then even from here, and it looks like you should be able to get in there from all these different tabs, right? But you're not. Once you get to this page to get to that account, you gotta click the account button again, and only then will you see the tracking info tab. So it's not, it's fairly intuitive to get back there, but it is a bit, uh, you know, you gotta go through uh, several channels to finally get here, and then you've got the code again and then you can paste it from that same screen, even if you left that screen right after you set up your account. So that's not that big of a deal. 
And once you're inside of account, just to show you very quickly, because you probably just started using this, you can see you can switch from account to account. And if you click on the home button, you're going to be in the home button then within that specific site account. Okay. If you click uh, admin, you're going to be in, in the admin area for that specific site account. If you were to go back um, to the main account page, okay, which from here is, I don't even know how you, how you get back there from here. You go uh, all, I don't know, that's just all data for all sites. Uh, you go to the account list actually, and that'll take you back to that page you usually get to right when you start, okay. You usually won't end up back there unless you deliberately try and go there because once you get into an account okay you go to admin even if you didn't click on it from the beginning and I'm in this account uh, once I click in there I'm in there up here okay so unless unless I click back to account list I can switch from account to account but you won't typically go back to this home page and this is just a couple extra tips here at the end to get you comfortable with the new analytics platform and this this hasn't been up that long it's only been about half a year so hopefully they keep it this way for a while it's it's oh, there's always nice changes when they upgrade to the new platform, but it is it does get a bit annoying when you learn one and then they change it all again on you. Uh, Google likes to do that, you know, but it's not a bad thing because Google rocks. So uh, that is it for this one. And just to recap, um, this was assuming that you you do have a Google account, and I showed you at the beginning how you can set up a Google account if you don't have one. And once you get one, it just takes you through the process of getting analytics running within your Google account. And it's quite simple. And once you get the account set up within GA for a specific site, I walk you through the process of how to put it into the code of your page, which is even simpler because you just go to the end of the head tag, make a little bit of space, put it in there, copy and paste. That's it. And I showed you how to get back to the code in the case that you've already created an account but didn't manage to save the code there and you needed to go back at another time and get into it, which is a little bit tricky, but still pretty simple. So we just covered all that stuff in this video. Hope you had fun. I will see you in the next one.